Hello everyone, this is Felix from the Choose and Net Machines YouTube channel. We're here at Thoma and Synth Reactor 2019 and with me is Jackson from Modal Electronics. How are you doing this morning? Good. Yeah, good. So you brought two of your new or upcoming synths, right? New and upcoming. Okay, yeah. awesome. So we'll have a look at those. But before we do, I'd like to talk to you a bit about Modal Electronics yeah. and how you came to work for them and what you actually do and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we talked at the bar a couple of times already now um, at this event here and um, you know, I think I told you, um, I got uh, wind of the modal electronics stuff um, by searching for MPE, MIDI Polyphonic Expression, because I love playing the instrument mm -hmm. and um, you guys, you build synthesizers that support this polyphonic expression stuff. Yeah. So that, of course, was like um, very interesting to me and that's how I yeah, got to know you. And now you came out with those smaller synths, which are also more affordable, mm -hmm. I assume. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, looking forward to talk to you about those. But yeah, so how did you come to work for Modal Electronics? Ooh, this is a yeah, this is an interesting story. I um, I actually got hold of the PCB of Sculpt uh, from the product designer, uh, who kind of passed it to me and said, I don't know whether it, it works yet, or you know, just okay. see if you can make some sound with it and if it's any good. And I uh, ended up making a track with that um, PCB as it was, and I was like, I think this is a subtractive synth and it sounds really good. And okay, uh, that eventually got forwarded through to. Um, the head of the company, who then contacted me and said, you know, do you want to come in and have a chat? And um, I did a couple of events initially, and he was like, do you want to do maybe some patches for it? Mm -hmm. and I so said, that was like the angle, you designed patches or you created a track with this bare bones exactly, prototype yeah. thing, right? Yeah, and okay. uh, he said, would you, be, would you be interested in doing patches for it? And I was like, mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, I sent over a couple of things and just to see what he thought and what the rest of the development team thought and he was like, uh, can we take all of them? Okay, <laughs> wow. And nice. uh, yeah, it just culminated in me kind of progressing slowly to being here doing product demonstrations and... Yeah. And what was your background back then? Like, how did you learn to make patches or like, were you a musician before? Or? Yeah, yeah, so I've been making music for, for a very long time anyway. I, I put records out and do library music and all sorts of stuff. So a long period of time with my head kind of mm -hmm. either in a computer or, you know, with synths and stuff. All right. So it's just been a very slow but steady, yeah, process mm -hmm. of just being surrounded by this stuff. And for how long are you working um, at Model now? Oh, six months. Yeah. All right. right. Oh. Relatively little time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. And uh, how to describe Modal as a company? Like, how how big are you guys? Like, wh what's the process when you design synths like that? And like, um, maybe the viewers don't know that. Like, um, the first ones you brought out, it's what what was it called? The number one, number two, so or something there's like that. Double O two, and then a double O one, which is a, a smaller mono version, mm -hmm. um, and then there's a double O eight, which is uh, not a hybrid synth, but a, a Analog, analog poly eight voice, mm -hmm. and those are like also like rack devices, which yeah. are like super powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. but just for the double two and the double eight, um, right. they're very like vastly powerful machines. Mm -hmm. They're really really interesting things to play with. Just uh, possibilities with with both of those is really staggering, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's where we started. Uh, I think back in two thousand and fourteen, um, building these huge huge you know very expensive um, machines, and then kind of. Uh, coming full circle to the other side of the spectrum and doing craft the original series before we updated it. The original mm -hmm. series was a DIY kind of, you know, take out the box, snap it together, and okay. you have a small little synth and, uh, and a drum machine as well. And did you need soldering skills for those? Nope, uh, it was all just plastic, um, sort of point to point. Okay, well, pens. nice. Yeah. So that's like a huge gap in between then, right? You have like those. Time, I guess, very affordable ones, and then you've got the super professional, huge ones. The range there's yeah, is uh -huh. a very wide gap in the middle of it. So these things are kind of um, filling out that range a little bit, mm -hmm. at least starting the progression to fill out the range. Um, so it's really, it's a really interesting time as we mm -hmm. kind of move forwards into, um, you know, coming back up that that tree or yeah, that, all right, that ladder. And those were um, uh, launched on Kickstarter, or these are both launched on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, which was a really, really interesting process because you have something, I guess, was unexpected. We had a lot of feedback from the backers and from potential backers as well about features that they wanted, mm -hmm. which I think if you're you know, manufacturing synthesizers, it's not something you usually have until something is actually out in the wild mm -hmm, sure. and you get that feedback from, yeah. from people who bought it. But we had that before we'd you know, finished development, so there are features that backers and, and um, people that were interested you know, and the devices actually ended up in the synth when mm -hmm. it came to production, so okay, that's really, um, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, uh, we talked about that also at the bar yesterday, um, I think, is that um, 
and, and I think you said is what's happening is that you were building like uh, platforms or frameworks to create mm -hmm. synthesizers um, a certain way, mm -hmm. and then when feature requests come from clients, you're very quick to or you could quickly implement them because you have this basis on which you work and which uh, is probably one of the hardest things actually to achieve in the first place, right? That's it. I mean, with my limited knowledge of this stuff, but the, the DSP guys there have, you know, they're just constantly working on on new beautiful things to kind mm -hmm. of implement in these, this kind of platform. And yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to watch that because you, when you realize what the possibilities are, when you have something that's working like that, you can start to move quite quickly, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be interesting to kind of observe, I guess. Yeah, and I assume then from your um, patch creation or your sound design background, mm -hmm. you also have like a somewhat of an influence, right, on the features or on the process, or how, how does that work? Yeah, I guess, I mean, we have, we have team meetings kind of uh, every couple of weeks and, and all kind of... Um, congregate and, and talk about these things and mm -hmm. you know the dev guys are making patches and sending them we're all sending them backwards and forwards and uh, uh, it just kind of it's quite organic in that way mm -hmm. um, everybody kind of has an input to to what you know what the final products ends up being and um, I think that's a really I think it's a really nice way of doing things mm -hmm. because you have more of a shared view of you know the eventual product so yeah, when it comes to, when it comes to patching these things as well, uh, it's a conversation we've been having a lot because we haven't finished, you know, making all the patches for Craft. So, if a sixty-four preset set can you can save on the device. Yeah, so it's it's quite a limited space, and right. you know we need to be careful about how much um, how much of each kind of patch we put in there and like what we what we represent, and it's kind of a, it's quite an important thing to get right because mm -hmm. you know when someone opens this up out of the box, you don't want it to be populated all with you know one kind of sound or something. Sure. So. And do you have like those? And categories then? Do you have like a dubstep category or something like Because I think they updated the micro cork at some point, like yeah. with new categories on the wheel, yeah. and it was, yeah, a little bit silly maybe. <laughs> but I mean, it's yeah. funny because it's kind of baked into the user interface, but you're like, okay, no, hip hop is now. Okay. <laughs> something like that. But yeah, yeah. no, I'd, I'd, we're not working in categories per se at the moment, but it's something we've been talking about, especially with this one because mm -hmm. of um, the smaller amount of patches. But with this, we have just kind of open banks of a variety of things, you know. All right. So, yeah, let's take a closer look at those. Um, what's the difference? First? Good question. Um, obviously, they both have quite a similar form factor, so it'd be really easy to think they were, they were quite similar, but they're actually, they're actually not. So I guess we'll start with Sculpt. Mm -hmm. um, this is a four-voice poly virtual analog synth. Mm -hmm. um, it has some nice features like FM and audio rate modulation, um, but otherwise it's, you know, just a, your typical subtractive virtual analog synth. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a really, really nice real-time sequencer in there, so it's a 756-step sequencer, okay. wow. which is basically intended just to catch all of the kind of you know nuances of your playing. So you don't have this kind of um, locked, quantized okay. sequences that are coming out. It's actually more like something you would play into your DAW. Okay, because that would be my first question: like, how do you manage so many steps on a device like that? Yeah. Um, well, it, it's as, an, as a performer. So it's interesting because you, it's not that you have access to edit the steps per se. Mm -hmm. um, there's you know there's that many because of the you know amount of space in between each you know um, subdivisions of the bar, and you want to capture kind mm -hmm. of exactly or more precisely how the performance is. So okay. it's not like a step editable sequence, right. yet, but it's. Um, so you basically hit record and then you play and then it, it'll loop that and you can I don't know overdub or change it, exactly. parameters. Yeah, uh -huh. Exactly. Cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice little box for doing, you know, kind of sketches and um, I've had a few mm -hmm. kind of experiences on the train with it and just getting lost, you know, leaving yeah. something looping and, and then just recording animation in and just turning it into something completely different. You know, okay. you have this beautiful kind of thing and you think, I just need to sample this now. <laughs> All right. It's, yeah, uh, then if you can, give us a demo real quick, I think. because uh, well, the well, I'll give you some sounds and then we'll, yeah. we'll do something with the sequencer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the sequencer is is relatively simple. You just press shift and put it into record mode, and it'll start to run. And you just input notes from there. Um, you know, press play to to stop recording, and then you know you can start editing.
So um, I assume you can um, disable the the click. You right? can disable, yeah. Yeah, the sure. metronome. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty straightforward, actually. Um, and that was like a 16-step sequence then. Yes. Yeah, so or like 16-note, or how, how do you call those, or how's it, the structure? It would still remain 756 steps, mm -hmm. but um, you have the options to do sort of different bar lengths. So we've got one bar, two bar, mm -hmm. four bar, and eight bar loops that you can kind of write in there. Um, so yeah. And you can set that up, like sequence length, everything on the device. Yeah, it's all, it's all just mm -hmm. here. So you go into a sequence edit mode and then you have all of the parameters down here to set up your sequence. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but there is a software editor as well yep. coming out at some point. The oh. software editor is out. It's oh, right. available on all platforms. Mm -hmm. um, we also have VSD3 and AU. I think that should be out now. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, yeah, we have iOS, Android, uh, PC and, and Mac platforms for everything. Okay, oh, awesome. And uh, what kind of waveforms do you have in there? Because it's like virtual analog, um, so you can probably have more than the standard three or four, right? Th yeah, this is where it gets interesting with this because we have a continuous control over the waveform. So mm -hmm. you do have all of the three expected wave shapes, mm -hmm. um, and also on the second oscillator you have access to noise, but you can scan continuously through all okay. of those and get the kind of midpoints. Um, mm -hmm. sort of and I assume you can automate that as well, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, Yeah, go ahead, let's just... Uh, Hear that in a, a short sequence. I'm just going to uh, initialize a patch for you. Uh, we can just leave the sequence going, I mm -hmm. guess. So yeah, you get an okay. idea of the kind of the scope of the waveforms with this one. But mm -hmm. as I say, this one is virtual analog, so you just have those wave shapes. Whereas Craft Synth, which we're just bringing out now, is a, is a wavetable synth. Oh, all right, so you okay. Have a huge amount of different possibilities mm -hmm. here in comparison to Craft Synth. Too. Okay, cool. Yeah, then sw let's switch over to the uh, Craft Synth. So that's Sculpt, and that is Craft Synth. Craft Synth. Too. Yeah. Too. Okay. So uh, another one that we kickstarted and um, we got fully funded. Uh, so it's just about to come out. It will be probably, I think, uh, start of May, mm -hmm. perhaps. Okay. Um, so we basically have a mono wavetable synth with oscillator modifiers. Um, this is kind of the really interesting part because there's some really typical oscillator modifiers and then there's some slightly more off the wall things mm -hmm. that the DSP guys have been working and on. And what exactly is an oscillator modifier? Like a modulation source or...? Yeah, exactly. But it's not always kind of the typical FM carrier modulator scenario. Mm -hmm. Some of them do react um, in that way, so the waves would be kind of defining how the modification affects the sound. Mm -hmm. So you and have two oscillators are, and yeah. they can affect each other through those modulators? Yeah, for some of them it is that, is that way and for some of them it is um, separate from the kind of relationship between mm -hmm. the oscillators. So we have things like frequency modulation, phase modulation, which are both quite similar, mm -hmm. ring mods, which are all quite standard things, and then we have three types of sync. You've got your standard hard sync, a windowed sync, which is really, really interesting okay. because it stops um, you, you not having one side meeting the zero point. Mm -hmm. So you have a, like a smoothed out sync, I guess. Okay. So um, you can, it's a, how would you describe it? It's like when you have like a sample start and end point that you move the, like this it, window exactly, and then... yeah. So you would, you would usually see your waveform and it, if you just had a single cycle, mm -hmm. uh, what's happening is you're kind of stretching that. Um, and so obviously the end that you're pulling out of this frame mm -hmm. is always going to be away from the zero crossover. Mm -hmm. So it's just making it so that that actually is contained and a little bit smoother. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's some other really um, interesting things like wave shapers, wave folders in there. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see, especially when it comes to the final patches of this, mm -hmm. how all of, all of those things lend to um, mm -hmm. like the different sounds available. And does that have the same sequencing capabilities it's as the Sculpt? Very or? different. This is a pro this uh, Sculpt has an arpeggiator in it, um, but it's mm -hmm. a different arpeggiator to the one implemented in Craft um, Synth. So it's a programmable app, mm -hmm. um, okay. meaning you can program in REST and whatever uh, note order you want to kind of follow. Okay. Um, and is that like quick to do? Like, can you or how is the interface there? It because is, I think that is always the thing. Like with small portable synths, mm -hmm. which sound great and which you can carry around with you, there's always going to be some interface issues I guess you have mm -hmm. to get around. 
um, around with. So um, how do you how do you manage that? I mean, we've seen like here that you've got like those modifier keys with the shift. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a pre-production unit. This is a prototype, and mm -hmm. uh, on here we don't have the the correct uh, overlays. So this is not how um, the eventual user interface is going to look. It's going to be uh, only slightly different, but uh, basically all you have to do to program the app is when you engage the app, you're holding a button and choosing the keys that you're pressing, mm -hmm. and then you hit another button to tie okay. in the rest. Does that work already in this pre-production unit? Or can, like, can you show this? Or not uh, yet? Not, not quite, all right. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it is working. Uh, it's very fun to use. Okay. But, um, yeah, but then let's, let's listen to some sounds then. That's if that's, that should, should be possible, right? Yeah. And the Windows Sync would be interesting, I think. Yeah, I can. Uh, we can get to that. <laughs> So you notice there's a there's a limited amount of keys here, but you can do custom sure. scales on this. So what I have okay. in here at the moment is uh, just a custom scale for the keypads, which is. And uh, this is kind of a more um, this is a more kind of uh, analog emulating sort of patch, but you have mm -hmm. really really aggressive patches in here as well. Um, things that are just kind of really off the wall and, and dirty, but then also like some softer sounds. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really versatile. Um, little beast actually. I'll just play some more sounds. Yeah. So yeah, if I just change the oscillator modifier over to a window sync, mm -hmm. and it'll give you some idea of how that sounds. Oh my God, that does sound really smooth, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, how's the automation on this one then? Like when you have your arpeggiator, can you also Automate parameters with that arpeggiator step sequencer, or no? So it's okay. not like a step input um, mm -hmm. automation for for this, and that's unfortunately limited to this having animation recorded. We we don't do this with Craftsin. Okay, um, but I'm sure you can control those parameters via MIDI yeah. externally. Yeah. So, so if you have like a sequencer that does MIDI CC sequencing. Absolutely, and that. and all of the encoders and the touchpads send out CC messages as well. So oh, right. You can do it either over the 5-pin DIN, or you can do MIDI over USB, and we can sort of set soft throughs on both of those. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the waveforms again, because um, here I assume you can also just blend between them, or...? Yeah, it's exactly the same um, operation as using mm -hmm. the uh, oscillators on sculpt, um, only the, just, yeah, the options are different. Mm -hmm. So uh, the waves are a collection of different types of... Um, waves from kind of different types of synthesis. Mm -hmm. We've got some of the waves from the 002 in there. We've got two banks of waves from the 002. Okay. Uh, we have two new banks of kind of modal designed wave shapes. Mm -hmm. And then we have some things that are borrowing from different and, and interesting synthesis types like polygonal synthesis. Okay. Ah, yeah, you mentioned that also sometime. Yeah. How does that work? I mean, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the best person to ask on this, um, but from my understanding, having uh, briefly scanned through a little document on mm -hmm. this, it's, it's basically um, as if you have, you know, a polygon, polygon so like a like hexagon kind of, or pentagon exactly, or something yeah, like that. Depending yeah. on how many sides you have, and you unfold it into a wave shape. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's as simple as it is. Okay. But it, I, think, I think it gets a bit more complex than that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting kind of thing to to put into something like this because mm -hmm. it's not something that you have easy access to, right. especially in um, you know consumer market. Um, there's some yeah, there's some really nice, varied sort of wave mm -hmm. tables in there. So let's maybe have a look mm -hmm. at some of those. Yeah, sure.
just yeah, okay. just a couple of the banks that are in there. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of scope for kind of sound creation mm-hmm. with, with all of And this. that was just one oscillator now, right? Yeah. And there's a second one, so you can, um, yeah, also, do, like you said, with those modifiers, or no, how is it called? Oscillator modifiers. Modifiers, right, yeah. So you can just mess with those like and have cool feedback or yeah. cross-modulation, yeah. I guess, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's uh, four oscillators per wave in this, so you actually have okay. eight going when you have both of them, but that would have been four kind of mm-hmm. stacked. But it's monophonic. It's a mono course. synth, yeah, it is. But it, it doesn't mean to say that you can't kind of cheat some mm-hmm. polyphony out of it. Okay. Because um, we can tune, we can tune either of the oscillators, but we also have a really nice function with the spread, where past detune um, we start to snap into intervals, so mm-hmm. major chords, minor chords, and a variety of other kind of interesting shapes. So yeah, that makes it of course easy, like especially I guess in a live situation, to quickly mm-hmm. uh, change your sound or change your tuning uh, to something that works, right, musically. It, yeah, exactly. And, and if you want to switch between, you know, having something that is not just limited to doing bass or leads, you want to switch to doing pads with this. It's mm-hmm. really easy just to have a bank of, you know, a variety of mono sounds and then yeah, cheating okay. you know, chord yeah. sounds. Nice. And um, do you already have like a um, apart from the release timeline? Are you still going to work further on these things? Because what I, of course, again would love to see is something like MPE on small stuff like that. I mean, I can't confirm anything, mm-hmm. but um, there's there's more to look forward to in terms of both of them. Uh, we have updates um, coming out for sculpts quite regularly, mm-hmm. and new features being implemented there. Obviously, without this being even into you know, uh, production yet. Mm -hmm. We're still working on finishing up the firmware and things like this, but um, there will obviously always be updates with that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's not just for these things, you know, now we have this form factor, it's something that we can play with more into Mm -hmm. what what sort of products we want to see, you know, in this kind of category. But then also um, we're kind of interested in looking to move away into different form factors as well. Okay, to further bridge the gap between your high-end products and the more affordable ones, right? Yeah, exactly. What's the price point of those, by the way? So, uh, Sculpt is 299 euros, Mm -hmm. Uh, Craft will be 149 euros. Okay, and they have battery compartments as well, right? So you you can work totally portable. Absolutely, completely portable. So Sculpt runs off six AA batteries, Craft Mm -hmm. runs off three AA batteries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've no need to power over USB. Um, but that would work as well with a power bank, I assume, right? Yeah, it'll, it'll work with a power bank, uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, with a computer, or, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you've got the Arturia Keystep keyboard here, um, of course. What would be the benefit, apart from having more octaves? Uh, when it comes to designing patches, it's just, um, it's one of those things you can add in so much more. You can have the aftertouch or the mod wheel modulation, okay. mm-hmm. and uh, that's when these things really start to sing. Okay, so Obviously, you got aftertouch in there yeah, as well. Of course, okay, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. We, um, we have, as you can see in the mod section here, so we have things for um, note key tracking, aftertouch, uh, velocity, expression pedals, um, and obviously mod wheel as well. Mm-hmm. Um, with this, there's a, there's a 8 by 37 mod matrix, but with this, okay. it's kind of one to one. We have mm-hmm. eight slots that you can just do mm-hmm. for all of those individual um, destinations. And how does that work? Because like having such a complex modi- uh, modulation system, mm-hmm. again on a small device like that, is yeah. Can you show this? Um, yeah, for really sure. Quick, maybe? With this, it's super super simple. So, for instance, with the LFO, you can see there's an assign next to it, and within this section here, it would just be clicking whichever one you want to um, assign something to. Mm-hmm. But you you literally go into an assign mode and move the parameter that you want to. Okay, and then and the then current have, LFO is assigned to the filter cutoff on that. Yeah, so you example. have a, a bipolar kind of readout for this, so we can have a negative or a positive um, modulation. Um, so it's yeah, really 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 simple. To and how would you remove that modulation? Uh, again, uh, you, you would either just go in here and return it back to zero. Uh-huh. You notice that the uh, there's a dot here showing how, mm-hmm. many, how many slots. So as you fill this up and we have more modulation, um, you, these will light up okay. uh, and show you kind of a readout of how many you have. But as you return it to zero, um, it will go away on its own. You, can, right. also, you can also clear them um, in, a, in a different place, but mm-hmm. it's super simple just to return them to zero. Okay, mm. great. Cool, yeah.
That looks interesting. So yeah, thanks a lot for demoing those units yeah. and talking a bit about modal. I think that's always so great, like with events like this here at Toma, um, that we get to meet each other, not just in this trade show um, situation, but also, like I said, like at yeah. the bar, yeah. and we can just um, just hang out a little bit and uh, get to know each other on a personal level, yeah. which I think is so important um, also for artists um, to know that the people who make those things are artists themselves, right? And um, how how they think and how they approach those products. Yeah, and it's I mean it's important for us, uh, you know, in, in events like this to to be to, to make sure people know that we're approachable. You know, that it's not um, a closed door mm -hmm. and that we can, you know. Um, how many people work at Modal approximately? It's a very small company, so probably under ten at okay. the moment. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. just under ten. Right. Um, but slowly growing, mm -hmm. step by step. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, thanks all for being here. Thanks for having me. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we see each other later yeah. somewhere around. Cool. Yeah, thanks all for tuning in. And um, yeah, thanks to Toman, of course, and all the sponsors. And yeah, see you at the next video. Bye bye.